slides that, off, that uh, provide a vaccine update. And then we'll turn to questions from members of the media as we did before. We will aim to wrap up the presentation by 3.30. With that, Secretary Collins, uh, please take it away. Yes, good afternoon and thank you, Matt. We will provide a vaccine update now and we will start with the first slide. So as you know, what we're doing is obtaining information on how many vaccines are being administered. And going forward, DOH will use what's called the New Mexico State Immunization Information System or NIMSIS data. Please keep in mind that we have to make sure providers are prepared and able to report in NIMSIS and do so consistently. And until we have 100% adherence to that, what we will do is provide an estimated total. Next slide. At this point, we've had 106,525 doses delivered to New Mexico. And per the NIMSA's report of vaccines administered, we've received about or administered about 48,299. Currently, we have 74% of providers who are reporting. When we consider the projected total vaccines administered, we're looking at a range of about 62,000 to 68,500. Now, according to the CDC, New Mexico has one of the highest administration rates in the country. Next slide, please. And this um, map, which you can review at the CDC website, clearly highlights that New Mexico is among the top states that's reporting, um, administering a high percentage of vaccines. So we're really doing well as a state. So further information on what we discussed last week, we have our vaccine registration website, which is cvvaccine.nmhealth.org. And the good news is in within two weeks, we've had nearly 300,000 New Mexicans who've registered. We encourage all New Mexicans to register. And keep in mind that if you don't have internet access, or you're not internet savvy and you don't wanna actually go to the website, we are gonna working on a call line this week that you can use and someone can work walk you through registration via the call line. Um, keep in mind that you can modify your profile at any time and users will receive notification when vaccine is available at nearby locations. Next slide. In addition to the users, we're also onboarding vaccine providers. And this is the link to that site. And currently we have 180 providers in the system, which is really good news. Next slide. And as I just mentioned, by the end of the week, we will launch a call center option, which will enable New Mexicans to call for personalized support with vaccine registration. So the press release is coming shortly. And the next slide, please. That brings us to the end of the slide, Secretary. Perfect. <laughs> so I think at this point, we can turn to members of the media. Uh, members of the media, please do just raise your hand uh, metaphorically. And uh, when I call on you, if you would, just remember to uh, announce your media outlet as well. So I see a couple hands. We'll begin with Julia Goldberg of the Santa Fe Reporter. Julia, you're unmuted. Please feel free to ask your question. Uh, thank you, Matt. And thank you, Dr. Collins, and Happy New Year. I had um, two questions. I wondered if you could share any additional information about which providers are not reporting uh, their vaccine administration and tell us if that's something the health department is working on to ensure the 100% reporting. And then I had also, you had also mentioned that in the first week of January, uh, the health department would have more information about the next uh, phases of priorities for vaccination. So I'm wondering where that effort is and if there's no information on the next uh, groups, which I gather there is not, or you would have mentioned it, if you were able to give us any background about what is those discussions are entailing at this point. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you and happy new year to you as well. Um, regarding NIMSAs, some things to keep in mind. Some providers, their electronic health record automatically links to NIMSIS, so they're not having to do anything manually. There are providers who'll have to do this um, reporting in NIMSIS manually, 
And so what we have to consider is make sure that providers are prepared and they know how to do this correctly so that their results are counted. And we also want to make sure that if there are any concerns or questions, they were able to answer them. So there are some smaller providers who have to do this manually, which is one sort of barrier to reporting, and then doing it correctly is another issue. And so we're working to onboard providers so that they know how to do this and to do it correctly. Um, in regards to the next phases, yes, you're correct. We are very close to releasing information on that. We really want to get this right the first time. We don't want to put something out and then recognize we didn't make the most thoughtful decision. And so I'm working closely with the governor's office to make sure that we have everything aligned as we think about what's best for the community and keeping us safe and how we can do this efficiently and effectively given the limited supply. Thank you, Secretary. Next, we'll turn to Robert Knott of the Santa Fe, New Mexican. Robert, you're unmuted. Thank you again, Secretary. Thank you, Matt. And I have three or four questions, but I'll ask a couple, let others ask, and maybe you can bounce back to me. Um, uh, I was curious if, um, first of all, are we seeing, I know the, I know the actual the, uh, virus rates have not been released today, but are you seeing yet that post-Christmas bump that we feared of um, coronavirus cases? Um, and then a, a quick follow-up on the, on the actual vaccine. Um, how many of these providers are, like have the storage capacity, including, including the <clears throat> freezer space, so to speak, to handle the virus? I can repeat either of those if you need. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding the post Christmas and for that matter, New Year's as well bump, we're still waiting to see that and we're gonna be following the data obviously as we do closely, but likely we'll begin to see if there's gonna be a bump, we're gonna start seeing it very soon. So we'll keep our eyes open and certainly report that out. Regarding um, vaccine providers, you have to meet certain criteria before we're gonna send doses to you. So a provider has to be able to store the vaccine and that's what we ensure before we move the doses to a given provider. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you. Next. I'll have more questions later, but I can wait. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Robert. And next we'll turn to Jamie Seymour. And I apologize, I haven't mastered everybody's media outlet. So if you would share it, I'd appreciate it. Hi, Madam Secretary, thank you for making the time. Jamie Seymour with KRQE. Um, so we've received proof that some people are using these special event codes, um, this particular one by 2020, um, to get like, a, I guess, a vaccine at Expo New Mexico. They were sharing it with their friends and their family and so on and so far. They even got back to our newsroom. Somebody was able to make a successful appointment. So is the state aware of this and doing anything to maybe crack down on these kind of line jumpers that are getting it ahead of these priority groups that need it most and also maybe why aren't these vaccine codes unique to each person so the code can be used only once thank you yes thank you jamie great questions and yes we are aware of sporadic reports of people jumping the line by sharing codes and what we've done immediately is implement a technical fix to try and prevent this from happening and so we're now no longer giving up codes that you can share, it has to be linked to your particular appointment and specific to you. Thank you, Secretary. Next, we'll turn to Dan McKay of the Albuquerque Journal. Dan, you are unmuted. Hi, uh, Madam Secretary, thank you for taking our questions. Um, th there's tremendous interest in these vaccine numbers, the, the amounts that are going, that are actually ending up in people's arms, how many have been delivered. Um, it, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the, the inaccurate reporting and whether you think that will be fixed with this new system soon? And uh, do you expect it, that at some point in the future you'll be able to provide uh, daily or regular updates um, uh, so that people can know how many vaccines have actually made it into, into arms and how many we've received, that kind of thing? Yes, and thank you for the question. Again, it goes back to the system we have for reporting, and we are really working to make sure that every provider 
will begin to report in NIMSIS each time they administer a vaccine so that we have data real time within the 24 hours before of who's received a vaccine. So it re relates to electronic health records and the ability to move data to NIMSIS quickly. With the registration app, it's connected to NIMSIS, so that data can go directly into NIMSIS, which is really helpful. Um, and also making sure that the providers understand how to report because you can go in and report numbers, and if you don't follow the protocol, it may not reflect your numbers accurately. So there are things that we're having to ensure, some quality checks that we are working on at this moment and daily. Um, and so we are really hoping to improve, certainly within the next two weeks. And we're actually working on a public-facing dashboard to provide more information to the public, and we're just making sure we have good numbers before we roll that out. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, at the moment, I'm not seeing a lot of hands raised, so if you are interested in asking a question, please do raise your hand. Uh, I'm seeing a couple pop up, but I, I think Robert was uh, interested in asking a couple more questions, so I'll just go to him and then go in sequence with the hands I just saw rise. Robert, I believe you should be unmuted. Feel free to ask your question. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that, Matt, and thank you again, um, Madam Secretary. Um, right now, how is the scheduling working for the three-week booster shot? We've gotten a couple of calls. I'm sure every media outlet is saying that people are being told, well, when you come in, we'll give you a card, whereas it would seem to make sense if I'm going in February 1st for a shot, it would all automatically say, come back in three weeks for a booster. So can you speak to that and whether the the booster shot in itself is going to limit our initial capacity of vaccine doses since we, we all have to get two of them. Thank you. Yes, and I'm going to start with the second question, um, the availability of the booster, if we're going to sort of like looking at the supply. We're actually um, good in that regard because if you think Pfizer 21 days after, Moderna 28, but those are not hard rules. You still have more time after that time point. So we will be okay with our current approach. And what we're doing is when you're scheduling for your primer, we're getting you set up so that you're also ready for your booster um, so that that information is in the system. And so if you go to a site, you're actually going to be scheduled immediately as far as told exactly when to come back. So the registration app is prepared and the site is prepared to make sure that you get your booster. Thank you for that. Um, I may have more follows after other people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Robert. Uh, next, we'll go to Susan Montoya of the AP. Susan, you're unmuted. Secretary, good afternoon, and thanks for taking our questions. Uh, mine relates to the earlier question about line jumpers. Can you talk us through who is actually eligible right now in the state to receive these vaccines and uh, what the future looks like in terms of those next groups? I know you're still planning that, though. Yes, so right now, what we've done is we're trying to make sure we complete that phase 1A, the healthcare providers. And we know that the next group we wanna target would be those 75 or older, but we just need to make sure we're prepared and we have a system in place so that we don't run into a disaster like we saw in other states with people standing in line. We wanna be prepared. And we are ahead of the game with the app that we have available. So um, it is a matter of planning and planning appropriately. And I appreciate your patience in waiting for us to roll out this plan, this next phase. Um, it's coming very soon. It's just a matter of us being very, um, doing our due diligence to do this right the first time. Thank you, Secretary. Next, we'll go to back to Jamie C. Seymour of KQRE, I believe it was. Jamie, you are unmuted. Hi, thanks again, Madam Secretary. Jamie with KRQE. Um, with this registration website, we were also curious what the state is doing to maybe reach those in need who don't have access to internet or computers to make these appointments, like the elderly, the poor, the homeless. Thank you. Yes, and thank you. And this goes back to um, the mention I had of the call center. So by the end of the week, we're gonna launch a call center option for those who may not have internet access or not feel comfortable with using the internet, where they can get personalized support with registering for the vaccine. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, I think we'll go back to Dan McKay of the Albuquerque Journal. Dan, you are unmuted. 
th thank you for continuing to take our questions. Um, can, can, in terms of the line jumpers, there's there's been a lot of interest in that too. Um, what, what advice do you have about uh, for people who want to get the vaccine as soon as possible? Um, if you have registered through the website, it is the only thing you need to do just wait until you get a notification? Um, and then second, to uh, address this issue of people feeling like they're missing out, um, if I were to go to say Expo New Mexico or someplace like that, would they would they screen me out if I'm not a healthcare worker, or is it kind of uh, kind of a system where they just take your word for it? Really, I would encourage you to register using the app. And yes, we will reach out to you when it's your time to go and when we have a site and give you the exact time to go and location. You know, if you were to show up at the expo, just think of it this way. We all did our part with preventing transmission of this virus by being good citizens. And so it's time to once again, think about what's the greater good here. And we've set this app up so that we can make sure we get to the right people at the right time. So please use the app and we're doing all we can to enforce that there's a transition process. There will be a webinar later today, walking providers through this process so that we're all clear. And we're gonna to continue to reinforce that communication for the next several weeks. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, we will turn now to Chris McKee of KQRE. Chris, you are unmuted much um i had one question and this i may have missed this so so um please let me know if i did um i understand that perhaps the phase 1b guidance was supposed to be possibly released today um my impression of that came from um uh, dr laura Parajon, um, in a news conference uh, yesterday uh, with the city of Albuquerque. So um, has that phase 1B guidance been released yet? And if not, perhaps when will that uh, be released? Thank you. Yes, thank you. And the phase 1B guidance will be released very soon um, this week. It goes back to the point of we're looking at the phase 1B and we're planning and coordinating and evaluating the data and what's best for the communities. And so once we have that finalized, which I'm hoping it's tomorrow, we are gonna roll this out, but it will certainly be this week. That's the goal. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, just a reminder to all the attendees that you are more than welcome to raise your hand and ask a question. Um, until I see new hands, I'll go back to the folks who've already raised them and asked questions. I'll turn back to you, Julia Goldberg of the Santa Fe Reporter. You are unmuted. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, Secretary Collins. I, I think Dan, Dan asked this question and you answered it, but I just wanna make sure I understand. If I jump the line, which I would not do, and I show up out of, I show up during the phase in which it's 75 and older and I'm not, is a healthcare provider going to tell me you're not eligible right now? Or am I just by virtue of showing up somewhere able to get the vaccine if I do that, which I would not do? Um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what happens after people have um, jumped the line. Thank you. Yes. So there are no walk-ins for vaccinations. So you need to have a code and appointment. So you're not going to be allowed in. And the folks who've had um, code shared with them, we've corrected that problem. So at this point, you really need to wait for your appointment. Thank you, Secretary. And I just got a text from Crystal Corrales uh, from Telemundo 48 in El Paso. Uh, they cover the southeastern uh, portion of our state as well. And uh, she just wanted to ask if there's anything additional you could say about the rumors or notion that teachers will be included in 1B. Well, at this point, we're actually get rolling out that information very soon as part of phase 1B, and we'll have more information very soon. Thank you, Secretary. All right, I think we will turn back to Robert Knott of the Santa Fe New Mexican. Robert, you should be unmuted. And again, I thank you. I have a lot of data um, questions. Um, what is our current testing capacity as of today? What are you hearing about? requests for the self test through vault. Um, and then I'm curious if you mentioned how many have been vaccinated as of today in New Mexico. Thank you. Here's a slide with that, you fuck. 
Okay, so as far as the self-test, we've had more than 10,000 New Mexicans who requested Vault, so there is uptake of that. Um, our capacity is very good. I don't have exact numbers in front of me, but if you need a test, you can get it and please do so. Um, we've got sites throughout the state. We've got the option of home test. So we're really doing good with our testing capacity. If anything, we encourage people to actually use that and to go and be tested or to use the home test. And then what about the numbers? Did I miss the numbers who have been vaccinated? So we provided a number. Um, and if you want to go back to that slide, Matt, if you can. I think it's worth revisiting. I don't know if you were aware that the reporting that we're using to confirm shots in arms is NIMSIS. And NIMSIS, we're at the mercy and we're really working to get more of the providers reporting accurately so that we can have accurate data. So if you look at the report that's in there now, it's about 48,299. But keep in mind, only 74% of vaccine providers are reporting at this time. And that's vaccine providers who have vaccine on hand. So when we think about that we're not getting 100% reporting, the projected total vaccines administered range from 62,000 to 68,500. And if we can show that map again, Matt, I think it's worth showing again. Um, New Mexico as a state is really among one of the top states where we're actually administering vaccine. Now, if you think about the US as a whole, we really want to do a good job. And is the US as a whole doing a good job? Is that a good reference point? We could certainly do better. And I think New Mexico is going to continue to be one of the leaders. We, are the, uh, we have an app. Other states would love to have an app. And we have an engaged Department of Health um, employee base that's really working hard to ensure that we have accurate reporting. Thank you, Secretary. I'll turn back to Chris McKee of KQRE. Chris, you should be unmuted. All right, very gracious of you. In that case, uh, let's turn to Dan McKay, still has his hand up. Dan, you should be unmuted. Hi, uh, Dr. Collins, thanks again for continuing to take questions. Um, it, sort of the flip side of the, vac of the line jumpers would be uh, having vaccines spoiled because there aren't enough people willing to get them or anything like that. Have you had any instances where, um, I, I don't know, vaccines have been removed from the freezer, but then you don't have enough people to give the actual shots to? Um, could you address whether anything like that has happened or whether you've had trouble getting them in people's, you know, having the demand to get them, to get the yeah. Thank you, I appreciate it. Did you have more to say? I don't, mean, I don't want to cut you off. I, th I don't. Uh, no, I'll, I'll mute myself, thank you. Okay, yeah. Um, so we, um, we've been very fortunate that we've got a really good vaccine team. And as we think about the gating criteria, we are hoping or we're, our messaging to vaccine providers is looking at when is it safe for you to move to the next phase? And one of the things is we don't wanna waste vaccine. So we wanna make sure we reach the people who are most at risk and prioritize, but at the, we don't wanna waste vaccine. So we have our team led by Dr. Sanzoni who we are working closely with providers. And anytime they're at risk of wasting vaccine, we work with them to push people who are either in the high risk group or encourage or provide them with information on who they can then vaccinate. So to this to date, we have not wasted any vaccine or allowed it to spoil because we have those mechanisms in place. Thank you, Secretary. I'll turn back to Julia Goldberg of the Santa Fe Reporter. Julia, you should be unmuted. Julie, I've just asked you to unmute. Are you able to do so? I'll give it a couple more seconds. Um, and I notice we don't have any other hands raised, but we do have some other members of the press here. Uh, we are aiming to end at uh, 3.30, so now would be a good opportunity to raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question. Um, let me try Julia one more time. Julia, can you hear us? 
Okay, I'll, I'll circle back to you in the, in the meantime, Robert Knott has his hand raised, so I will go to Robert. Robert, you should be unmuted. And again, and again I thank you. Um, I think we could, we could go on with questions, so I appreciate it. Um, are, is your Department of Health, ma'am, monitoring after effect symptoms? In the, in the early days, we heard also all sorts of reactions, but that seems to be dissipating a bit. But I'm curious, statewide, are you hearing of any you know, um, adverse symptoms to the vaccine? And um, I'd like to ask a somewhat personal question, but I think it's proper. Uh, uh, have you been tested? Have, have you taken the vaccine yet? Thank you on both counts. Yes. So as part of the protocol for um, administering the vaccine, we have um, persons who've received it, they're monitored for 15 to 30 minutes. And fortunately, we've not received any um, reports of adverse reactions. Um, and so that's a good, that's like a good report, obviously. And certainly I've been tested um, back in months ago, I was tested and I did come up for my vaccine. I am a practicing physician. So I was vaccinated uh, about a week ago um, for my primer. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Robert, you appear to be the only one with your hand still raised. So we've got four minutes. If you've got more questions, feel free. We'll use the full time. And then if we're uh, not seeing additional hands, we will wrap at 3.30. Robert, you should be unmuted. Thank you. Um, so I assume you've had no adverse reactions to the vaccine. And uh, then finally, how's it going in terms of the, the, uh, the long-term congregate care facilities, both staff and, and residents in terms of where they, where they stand in all this? And I thank you again for answering these questions. Sure, and yes, fortunately I've not had any adverse reaction. I'm doing well. Um, and the long-term care facilities, we are working to make sure that we get vaccine distributed in those sites. And so we have plans in place and we're moving forward and we're looking at the end of January to have most of those primers taken care of. So that's really good news. Thank you. All right, Secretary, at this point, I don't see any hands raised. So I think we will end a couple of minutes early today. Thank you everyone. And obviously if there are any follow-ups, feel free to email me and uh, we will get your responses as quickly as we can. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you.